Welcome to Cafe Racer Garage. I am Dan, giving you the skills and inspiration that you need to build a motorcycle that you can be proud of. And today we are working on the XJ650, doing a mono shock and wait to the end because I'm going to show you, you can do this on almost any bike. Well, any bike with twin shocks at the moment. Let's get into it. For this setup, I need to make a top and bottom bracket for the shock absorber to put the bolt through, as well as a plate on the top to be welded to the frame and a bottom plate to be welded to the swing arm. So late last night, I tacked all this together and unfortunately, and I thought this was gonna happen, it failed, completely didn't work. And there's a reason behind this and I'll show you why. I tacked everything up and then I moved everything down. As you can see here, I've had to bring that plate further back. The reason being is for the pivot point because this is where the main swing arm pivot point is and it's just not enough. It needs to come back further in order for it to have any sort of leverage for it to, to work. As you can see at the moment, if I press on it, you can see it's working, uh, but it's not quite the height that I wanted. I wanted it to be sitting a little bit higher. But I want to mention, if you decide to do this, make sure you get the right shock set up for your needs. You can get a random shock off another bike and just hope it works, or you can do what I did and call the guys at YSS Australia, Suspensions Are Us, and get the exact shock for your particular setup. This isn't actually the right one. I'm waiting on the right one to turn up, but it's the right length. So I'm gonna use this as a mock-up. And then when the new one turns up, we'll throw it in and see what it looks like. And if you don't know about YSS, they are an amazing shock absorber company. They're actually made in Thailand. They're fantastic. I have them on all of my bikes. It is like night and day difference. For this setup, I need to make a completely new plate for the top of the shock, but the bottom is going to be utilizing the original bottom shock mounts off the swing arm. Stay tuned, it'll all make sense in a minute. I'm certainly not the inventor of this idea. This has been done on multiple different bikes by different people. However, with mine, I wanna make sure that that shock line goes all the way through into the bottom mounting bracket system that I'm gonna be making. Now, quick stop over to my metal lathe and milling machine where I can make a couple of cool looking end caps with bolt holes. An alternative way to do this instead of machining something would be to use a rose joint and just weld it in. And speaking of welding, I'm only gonna be tacking this together just to make sure I'm fully happy with it before I completely weld it out. So the last component that I need to make is a steel bush for the bolt to go through and that'll be welded to a piece of pipe similar curve to the tire. 
and then weld it on top of a plate which will be mounted to the top of the swing arm. So I went ahead and tacked on the end caps as well as the plates that I made. And look what's just arrived in the mail. Let's get out of the box, have a look at it and fit it up. If you're looking for suspension on whatever bike you have or you want to do a custom setup like I am, go and speak to Izzy over at Suspensions R Us. He's a world of knowledge when it comes to this stuff. And sometimes trying to get the right shock to suit a custom setup is half the battle. That is gorgeous. Look at that. So comparing the two shocks side by side, this is the one they already had, and it's about 70 mil diameter that way, and this one's about 80 millimeters diameter, and the body of the shock is actually a lot bigger too. I can't quite ride it at this stage, and that seat is not very comfortable, but we have suspension. Yeah, how good is that? I'm actually quite curious to what bike or bikes you're working on at the moment, so leave me a comment and let me know the make and model of bike you're actually working on, and if your mono shock is something that you might be interested in, leave that in the comments as well. If I get enough people interested in the same make and model, I'll make a kit available so that you can purchase it, because I know not everybody has the ability to fabricate stuff like this. It would be pretty cool to have a kit available that you can bolt and weld on. And for anyone with a keen eye, you may have noticed I've taken the 18 inch rear wheel off and put a 16 on, which has given me more clearance here and also a fatter tire, because this is a 130. The original was a 120. The tolerance down here is pretty tight, but I do have a plan, so stay tuned. And the 16 inch rim was actually donated by my XV build because I don't need it anymore doing the single sided swing arm setup that I've got there. But the Virago wheel fits the XJ like a glove. You just have to remember to use the Virago drum brake because the original XJ drum brake won't fit. And eventually I'll probably change both of the wheels, but because it is a shaft drive, it just puts a whole new challenge to it. So I'll figure that out at a later stage. So as you can see, now the new shock is installed. It's got that beautiful straight line, which is exactly what I was chasing and I couldn't be happier. So I have another bike sitting on my operation table right now, getting some final touches. It's been a completely off camera project, but it'll be coming out fairly soon. And if you've enjoyed this video, go and check out more of the XJ build or a few of my other builds. I'll leave playlists just here. <laughs>